So a while ago, I made a video called Highest Paying Jobs Without a Degree, and a lot of you guys really liked it. So I figured now would be a perfect time to show you high paying work at home jobs. But not just from home, you can actually do any of these things anywhere because of this wonderful thing we have called the internet. Now for most of us, making money online sounds like a fantasy or like it's something that's really, really hard to do. But I'm here to tell you that there's actually a ton of ways to do it and it's not as difficult as you think. Don't worry, I'm not talking about any of that mess that wastes your time like taking a bunch of surveys or doing swag bucks or any of that weird stuff to make a few cents, literally like a few cents per survey. No, that's a huge waste of time in my opinion. No, I'm talking about making a full-time salary from working online remotely from anywhere in the world, whether it's home or anywhere, I don't care. The coffee shop, the gas station for all I care. By now, you guys know the drill for my career videos. Alexa, change the lights. Crazy how that works. I don't even have an Alexa. All right, coming in at number 10, we have graphic designer. Your average graphic designer makes between $18 and $40 an hour. And look, I know that's a huge gap, but I'm gonna explain why it's such a huge gap later. But on average, you'll see that these guys make about $37,000 per year. Now these guys design visual concepts either by hand or through a software such as Adobe Illustrate or Photoshop or some combination of the two. And these visual concepts are made to make businesses and clients of the graphic designers to become more prominent, to become more recognizable by the public and pull in their customers. And everything a graphic designer does with their visual concepts, whether it's the fonts, the colors, the design for a brochure, the design for a magazine, or even a billboard, everything they do is important and everything they do counts. All these things pull in the audience of the business or to the client of the graphic designer. Graphic designers typically have a marketing background and of course an artistic background and they've got to have a good eye to be successful at the job. Now usually those who wanna pursue a full-time job in graphic design, they'll be told that they need to have a bachelor's degree in graphic design. If you do it the freelance way, you won't need a degree at all. In fact, majority of freelance graphic designers don't have a degree, period. And all freelance means that you're not tied to one specific company permanently, that you work for a multitude of different clients and businesses, and you're pretty much on your own terms there. And you pretty much have to find your own customer base that hires you for a graphic design job and you charge them a certain amount. And with this, you can actually charge as much as you want per job. And as long as you have the skills to back it up, you can get away with charging said amount. And like I said before, a good perk with doing this as a freelance job, you can charge as much as you want and you're more in control of how much you make per hour, which is why there's such a big gap in terms of how much graphic designers make. This job has an expected growth rate of 1%. Coming in at number nine, we have a recruiting specialist. Also called talent acquisition specialists or even headhunters, these guys make an average of $42,000 per year and they have a 5% expected growth rate in the future. Recruiting specialists are the ones who find the best candidates and the best potential employees for an empty slot in a company. So if you've ever applied to a job through ZipRecruiter, Monster, or Indeed.com, you've probably had somebody reach out to you to discuss your qualifications for a certain job. That's a recruiting specialist. They can also be found on LinkedIn very easily. For one, if you actually use LinkedIn, all of your prior career history is up there and all your schooling, all your education, all your qualifications, certifications, and everything is up there for everyone to see, especially recruiting specialists. And two, if you have the looking for job opportunities feature turned on on your LinkedIn, well, guess what? That's basically like sending recruiting specialists straight to your inbox. If you haven't tried that and you actually are looking for another job, I'd recommend you do that because it happens pretty quick. I did it as an experiment one time and there were people like flooding my inbox. It was, it was ridiculous. But yes, recruiting specialists typically work alongside the hiring manager within their respective department within a company. And they work along with the hiring manager so they can see exactly what the hiring manager is looking for in terms of qualities of the person, in terms of qualifications for the job, so that they can effectively start their headhunt. And these recruiting specialists can either be part of the company that's hiring for this job, but in most cases that I've seen, they've been through a third-party recruitment agent this gives them the ability to work with multiple companies at once and have several different clients. With recruiting specialists mainly being through third parties, their location is completely remote because guess what? They're contacting and headhunting people that are around the country, sometimes even around the world. So it really does not matter where they're at. They're on the phone most of the day with these people discussing their qualifications. 
So with their location not being a factor, this makes for a great work at home job choice. In order to land this job, most employers require that you have a bachelor's degree in human resources or some other related field such as business. And they strongly prefer two to three years of entry level recruiting experience before you graduate to the recruiting specialist level. Coming in at number eight, we have a translator slash interpreter. And their job is pretty self-explanatory. They convert one language to another so there can always be an open line of communication. And there's a multitude of different ways they can do this. Uh, typically a translator might translate documentation. They might translate an email. They translate in real time when someone's having a conversation with another person and the other person doesn't understand that language that the person is speaking. They're there to translate in that real time. I've even seen this done through the phone, especially with your more innovative companies that are bringing people in from around the world. You have to have translators that are completely well-versed in language to convert it to English or whatever language so that people can fully understand the information that they're being given. This is a job that's definitely not going anywhere anytime soon. There's a ton of full-time employers who are actively seeking translators in every single industry and in every single sector. It even has a whopping growth rate of 20% through 2029. Just to put that into perspective, a good growth rate is 7%, and that's also average. This is more than double that of average. It's almost triple <laughs> the average growth rate of a job. That said, it's definitely not easy to land one of these jobs or to qualify for one of these jobs because you have to have a native level proficiency with two or more languages. And more times than not, English is one of those languages. In most cases, when you're entering this field, most employers require that you have a degree. Even if you're doing this freelance, it's strongly preferred that you have a degree. Of course, if you've mastered your craft and you have native level proficiency within these languages, then yeah, you can get away with getting your foot in the door. I'm just telling you, in most cases, more times than not, a degree is strongly preferred if you're gonna be a translator or an interpreter. But just like any other job, your experience alone can outweigh the qualification of having a degree or even just replace it. These guys make between $21 and $25 an hour and they have a median pay of $51,830 a year. Coming in at number seven, we have a freelance video editor. So this is purely a freelance job. And what that means is the amount you make from doing this job completely depends on how many clients you get. And if you're watching this video and you're hearing the word freelance a lot and you're wondering how in the world am I gonna get clients and market myself, I don't know how to promote myself and market myself, you don't have to worry about all that. All you have to do is check out platforms such as Upwork or Fiverr and those types of platforms. These platforms match up freelancers with potential clients that are specifically looking for the skills of said freelancer. It's very similar to looking for a job on LinkedIn. You put all your qualifications up there and your profile is up there and it matches you up with people who are looking for your skills and typically when, you, when you're on LinkedIn if you're especially if you're looking for a job and if you're expressing through LinkedIn that you're looking through a job guess what you're looking for a job people are looking for people to hire so the, it matches the two up it's very similar to LinkedIn so instead of marketing and promoting yourself through the internet to look for a job no instead you're on LinkedIn and you're able to connect with people and businesses who are looking for a certain skill set and that skill set happens to be the skill set that you have. Do you see what I'm saying? Same concept. Now what video editors do is simple, but it's not easy at all. What they do is they edit videos for a number of different clients. And typically these clients want you to edit videos that are stuff like special occasions or YouTube videos or special projects that they're just working on, music videos even. They want you to make them look awesome pretty much. Editing is something that takes a lot of skill and it's a very time consuming thing until you become proficient at it. And a lot of these people who are paying video editors don't have the skill. They don't have the time. So that's why they end up hiring a video editor. And depending on the type of work that the video editor does, that will determine how much the freelance video editor actually charges per project. This could be very basic editing where they just cut out all the weird, awkward silences or any uninteresting parts and just do a basic cut of the video to make it look decent and watchable. Or they might have really advanced videos where all the boring and redundant stuff is all cut out, but also there's a movie-like quality to it. There's things that zoom in, the camera zooms in and zooms out during certain portions of the video. 
There might be music in the background. There might be really fancy transitions or animated visuals throughout the entire video, giving it a movie-like type of quality. And this is all an attempt to make the video very entertaining and seamless. And this can be done for wedding videos. It can be done for graduation videos, YouTube videos, and really just any type of special projects that people are working on, whether somebody is getting into film or whatever the case is. People are really it's a very profitable business, video editing it is. Basically what'll happen is the client will send you what it is that they want in the video. You will then take their video, chop it up, and you would edit it and then you would send it back. And based off of their approval or if they want to send it back and have you do some more to it, they'll do that. But that's generally how it works. And then you get paid. That's how it works. With that said, these guys usually make an average between $2,000 and $6,000 a month. The reason I'm not giving you a yearly average is because these guys typically do this job on the side in addition to something else, and they don't typically go full time with this. Coming in at number six, we have Grant Riders. They make a national average of $46,577 a year. Grant writers research, draft, and submit proposals that help individuals and organizations get grant funding. They start the researching process by looking at the grants and seeing if the grants line up with the goals of the organization or the individual that is seeking funding. Once everything checks out there, they typically write a proposal and that proposal has to be convincing, charismatic, welcoming, and it has to be factual. You gotta think, there's several people and organizations competing for the exact same funds, so the facts and the details in this proposal have to be on point. And this is so that whoever's funding this grant is actually convinced that the person or the organizations that they're putting their money into is actually worthy of the trust and support of the funder. This requires a lot of research. And the proposal requires a ton of documents. Project narrative, a cover letter, letters of endorsement from people throughout the entire community, and just other supporting information. And this is a lot of work, but it's work you can do from home or pretty much anywhere. In fact, a few months ago before all this pandemic mess started happening, I was on a plane and I was sitting next to this guy and he was just working on something that looked so elaborate. Like he had an iPad over here, he had a laptop over here, he had like a book in his lap and <laughs> he was just doing so much. Like he's writing in between writing on his iPad and typing on his computer. He's like looking down at his notes in his book and you just see a bunch of stuff like underlined and highlighted. And I'm thinking to myself, what is this guy working on? Good Lord, what is he doing? Anyways, when he decided to take a break from what he was doing, he looked over and told me, yeah, man, I'm just working on writing this grant for an organization. And I was like, that's cool. You know, and we had a good conversation about it. But yeah, that just goes to show, I mean, we're on a freaking plane and he's working on a grant. Like you can, this does not matter where you're located is what I'm getting at. Of course, they have to do stuff like maintaining and building relationships with potential donors. They have to answer the funders questions about a certain project that they're working on. And they have to do stuff like post grant documentation. But you know, th this is all you really need to know for now. This is just a quick synopsis of what grant writers do. And this is some pretty high level stuff, right? So it shouldn't come as a surprise that this job requires a bachelor's degree, typically in English or in marketing, and those will get your foot in the door. Coming in at number five, we have Medical Coder. These guys make a national average of $49,204 per year with a whopping job growth of 13%. Medical Coders read through patients' medical charts and they analyze them. And they do this to see any previous diagnoses or procedures that were performed on the patient. They take this information and they categorize it into a national classification system. And they assign a numeric or an alphanumeric code to each of them. And if that sounded like a bunch of gibberish to you, basically what these guys do is they take a doctor's report and they translate them into useful medical codes. These medical codes are used by insurance companies once a medical provider has either treated or examined a patient so they can understand what was done to the patient so that they can properly process the bill. Fun fact, using common language in terms of what was done to the patient, that is not clear enough information for the insurance company to give the patient a bill. And since this isn't clear enough, that's why they have to go by a very specific set of codes that are sent by the medical coder. These guys work in a multitude of areas, but they work behind the scenes. It could be in hospitals, urgent cares, nursing homes, insurance companies even, and you guessed it, from home. And there are several, several different opportunities to do this type of work from home. Coming in at number four, we have a tutor. Now this is an interesting one because this is actually a bit of a special case. Now, obviously these guys help students with subjects that they're struggling in or just subjects that they want to improve in. Math, biology, physics, anatomy, all kinds of stuff. Basically if there's a subject, there's a tutor for it. 
But what makes this job such a special case is that it's purely an hourly job and there's a ton of versatility with it. These guys can get on a platform that pays them an hourly wage such as Check Tutors, Udemy, or Schooly, or they can go the freelance way and take this completely into their own hands and market themselves as tutors and charge however much they want per hour. And they can teach from the comfort of their own homes, I might add. And honestly, no matter what route you choose, this is the definition of a work at home job. And just to paint a quick picture for you, if you were to do this on your own, you could control exactly how much you want to make per hour and how much you want to charge somebody per hour. And you can judge that based off of the complexity of whatever subject it is that you're tutoring somebody on. And look, once you get clients or students, you can easily set up meetings with them through Skype, through Zoom, or I've even seen some people use FaceTime to do this. And guess what? If you build up a decent clientele and you do this for eight hours a day, that money an hour that you charge can add up very quickly. And I don't wanna give you an exact salary because just like the video editing, this is something that a lot of people just do on the side. And the thing about this, you don't need a degree to be successful at this or to even land a job in this. You just need to be good at that subject, whatever subject that is you're tutoring in, you gotta be good at that. And you have to have proof to back up that you're good at that. Coming in at number three, we have insurance agents. These guys sell and negotiate insurance policies. And trust me, there's a ton of different policies and industries that insurance agents work in. For example, they could be selling property insurance, life insurance, car insurance, health insurance, you name it, there's an insurance for it. And what they do is they build relationships with clients and with potential clients. They do a lot of cold calling, which is basically calling random people in hopes that they want to buy an insurance policy. And once they get on the phone with the person, they discuss coverage needs. They discuss why it's important to have an insurance policy within this respective field. Based off of the client's coverage needs, they also discuss the affordability. Can the client afford whatever insurance coverage they're saying that they want or that they need? Based off of the coverage needs of the client and based off of what the client can afford, the insurance agent matches them up with the best policy for them. And honestly, this takes some negotiating skills and it even takes some marketing skills. And these guys have got to know their stuff when it comes to the insurance policies and they have got to know their stuff in terms of the benefits of each respective insurance policy that they're selling. In order to land this job, in terms of education, all you need is a high school diploma, but, but you'll also need a license. And depending on what state you live in, that's what's gonna depend on what type of licensure you need. Anyways, these guys make a national average of $56,651 per year and they have an expected job growth of 9%. And since they spend most of the time on a phone or in a digital meeting, guess what? Their location is completely remote and it does not matter where they're at. So with that said, this makes a perfect high paying work at home job. Coming in at number two, we have programmers. This might not be one that you expect us to make the list, but yes, programmers. Look, right now, more programmers are working from home than ever before. And guess what? It's even gotten to the point of programmers demanding that once they get the job that they work from home. No kidding. These guys make a national average of $67,099 per year and they have a whopping job growth of 17%. And instead of giving you a long, boring, drawn out explanation of what programmers do, I'm just gonna sum it up real quick for you. These guys program applications, websites, video games, basically if it's anything virtual, they program it. It's their sole purpose and responsibility to design, develop, and test software to make sure that the software is secure and reliable. They also have to deal with troubleshooting and debugging in the event that there's an issue with the software. On top of this, they have to maintain the source codes of the computer programs. And by the way, that source code they have to maintain is written in programming language so that the computer can understand it. So, no source code, no computing. So since this is mainly a work at home job and it's a very highly specialized skill, and because it also pays well, it almost always, always requires a degree, either in computer science, in mathematics, physics, even engineering, basically anything that has a heavy coding background within the field, because you gotta know how to code. And if you don't have that, as long as you have years of relevant experience within programming, you'll be fine. You'll be able to get in the door with that too. Coming in at number one, we have a web developer. This is where the thumbnail of this video comes into play. These guys make a national average of $71,626 per year with a ridiculous growth rate of 27% through 2024. 
Like I said before, guys, the average growth rate is 7%. This is more than triple that. That's more than triple the average. That, that is almost quadrupling the average. Come on, y'all, that's cold. Anyways, these guys create and design websites. They're responsible for how the website looks, performs, the speed of it, and just how much traffic it can take at one time without crashing. And of course, they're responsible for how smooth the interface is and how people are able to interact with the interface of the website. How user-friendly is it? How smooth is it? How quick is it? Stuff like that. Sometimes they might even have to create content for this website. Here's the kicker. If you choose to do this as a freelancer, you could charge by the project and make ridiculous amounts of money. Believe me when I say that. When I say ridiculous amounts of money, I'm talking about $20,000 per month. Now you're probably wondering, how do I even become a web developer? Well, it really doesn't require an extensive amount of education or anything. The most common requirement that I've seen is an associate's degree in web design or web development. But there's a bunch of people who have gotten away with just a high school degree, and that's fine too. But again, if you decide to do this as a freelancer, it really drastically lowers the chances of you actually needing a degree at all. Because they just need to see your portfolio. They need to see that you're good at what you do, that you're good at web design. As long as you can demonstrate and show that you're good at being a web developer, people will hire you in a heartbeat to be a web developer. People aren't just, oh, well, you don't have a degree, so... Take your business elsewhere, that ain't how it is. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, those are high paying work at home jobs. And as you've seen throughout the video, a lot of them don't require degrees. A lot of them don't require that much. They require something of you. You definitely have to work if you wanna be able to work from home. But I mean, I think it's worth it. And the time it takes for you to get the qualifications to get these jobs, it's not that hard to do. Especially for the money that you get in return from working from home. A lot of people don't want to work somewhere where they have to answer to somebody constantly and, and be away from home, away from their kids, away from their family. So this gives you the opportunity to be at home more often. And it also gives you a good opportunity to start freelancing stuff and do things on your own term and have people hire you. But you tell them how much you're, you're going to charge them to do. You can't really do that with a traditional job. You just can't. Anyways, that's enough rambling for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal growth and personal finance so that you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Stay cold.